welcome back to Nourish. Today I'm really, really excited to do this episode. We're gonna make a tomato basil bisque with a macadamia nut ricotta. And we're also gonna make the bread loaf to make a grilled cheese on the side. So this is gonna be really creative, really fun, and super nutrient dense and filling. So we'll get started right over here at the stovetop. We're gonna start with our water and our maple syrup. So I'm just gonna take my water, place it into just a small sauce pot. Turn my heat on really low, especially if you don't bake bread a lot. This recipe is super easy, but go slow. It's better to go slow and get it right than have to clean up your mess. And then here's our maple. So with bread, especially any bread that you're gonna use yeast, not like a quick bread, you want to make sure that you have your sweetener or your sugar in the water. That's what's gonna make that yeast come alive and grow, it activates the yeast. We also, I like to use a thermometer. This is what we use here at Nourish with our employees. This one's super easy, you just open it and it turns on. And then we keep it here and we just start to stir. So we just want it to be a little bit warmer than room temp, so about 100 is what we're going for. See how quickly that comes up, perfect. So that's a little bit over, that's okay. There we go kind of in between. We're gonna go ahead and grab it. So the thing when you're making bread that you want to pay attention to is if it's cooler in your kitchen, so in the winter time here, our hood pulls in a lot of that cold air, you wanna make it like probably 10 degrees higher because it's gonna take a little bit longer to rise. If it's summertime and it's super hot, we do like 95 degrees because it's gonna rise so fast that it'll explode in our oven, have big old holes in the middle. So. Bread is really tricky since you are using a living organism like yeast. So here's my dry active yeast. You can get this at any local store. You can see that just go in there. You can give it a stir if you want. I'm just gonna shake it around and then that maple syrup and the heat of that water is gonna start to activate it. So while that's activating, I'm gonna show you guys this really cool loaf pan. I could use a standard one, but this is what we use here at Nourish. We go through about five loaves of bread a day, so we make our bread fresh daily. Um, I think it's so cool that we get to bake bread every day. It always smells so good. But these are commercial size loaf pans that you can do multiple loaves in. You obviously could use a normal one at home. Just make sure it's about a two quart size bread loaf pan because this is a really big loaf of bread. And then from there, I already have my dry ingredients measured out. So our local brown rice flour that I love, you could use quinoa flour if you have that on standby. We use air root starch here. You could use tapioca starch, potato starch, any starch you like. We also have our baking soda, which we make from scratch with air root starch, cream of tartare, and baking soda. Traditional baking powder has cornstarch in it and I don't eat cornstarch, so we make our own here. We also have flax meal, so that's gonna be our binder or our egg in this bread. Some sea salt, and then also some gargum too. So the gargum is gonna give it the gluten window that it loses when the gluten's gone. So it'll just give it that nice spider web look on the inside of the bread. We also have our avocado oil here. So you could use olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil. You'd want the coconut oil melted if you used it. And then I use a little apple cider vinegar. Any vinegar will work here, but we love fermented apple cider vinegar. It has a ton of healing benefits really good for alkalizing your body, getting rid of acne, so many different things. So while that rises, we're just gonna grab our pan spray. So now I'm gonna show you guys how I like to spray out my pans. You can use any healthy pan spray that you like, coconut, olive oil, avocado oil. There's so many different kinds now. You wanna make sure when you spray, and I really wanna show you guys this, that you get the sides really well. The back side the corners, and then the bottom. So I do use quite a bit of spray here at Nourish and at my house. Um, when I worked at Great Harvest Bread Company in North Carolina, I was their executive baker for three and a half years, and Cindy was my boss and I loved her to death, but she always taught me it's better to use like 10 cents worth of pan spray than it is to lose a whole loaf of bread. So be generous with your pan spray. Man, this is like almost perfectly ready. You can see it's starting to grow which is exactly what we want with our yeast, so don't be scared of it. Nice, get some of those little guys in there that weren't in there before. All right, so, 
So this dough is great because you don't have to knead it all day long, so it actually is really easy to make, and it's almost like soft serve ice cream. So there's no kneading involved, which makes it a little less intimidating. And we're just gonna pour all of our wet ingredients into our dry. So it doesn't matter really what order you put them in. You just wanna make sure you do it kind of quickly so that you can start mixing it all up. You could do this in a KitchenAid. We have a really large KitchenAid that we use here. Sometimes I'll do it at mine, but my daughter and I make bread all the time, my four-year-old and I. When she was two, we got her allergy tested, and my original bread recipe has eggs and almond meal in it. Well, she can't have almond or eggs. So I had to make it vegan and nut-free. So that is how I created this recipe, which will be in my kids' cookbook coming out soon. So this is a tribute to my girl Dylan, love her. And then when you're mixing it, you just wanna make sure that there's no lumps. I don't know if you can see that there are still a couple lumps from the arrowroot starch, so I'm just trying to get those broken up. Oh. Perfect, so you can see that's like soft serve ice cream there. And that is the perfect texture. We're gonna take it all and just start to pour it into our pan. Nice. So, like I said, it is a really big loaf. We want that rise. We want it to be a nice big sandwich grilled cheese for us. And then I'm just going to take my spatula, spread the top around. If you wanted to, you could get some water or olive oil on your hands and just do it that way. The way that it looks on the top is the way it's going to look after it's done baking. So if you have a bunch of waves in it or if you have like a mountain in the middle, that's probably not going to bake well. The middle is going to be raw, but you want to just get it nice and flat and smooth. And then we're just going to leave this to the side and let it rise for about five to ten minutes because it's a little bit cooler in here. If it was summertime and really hot, I definitely wouldn't let it rise. I'd just throw it right into the oven so that it wouldn't get too big on us. But getting a little bit colder out, so we'll let it rise for 10 minutes. And then we'll get started on our macadamia nut ricotta. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start making our macadamia nut ricotta. You can use any white or blanched or peeled nut that you want to use. If you use something like a walnut or a pecan or an almond that isn't peeled, it's not going to blend really well. You're going to have like chunks of the skin. So I just wanted to show you guys how to do this with macadamia nuts. I have let these soak overnight because I want them to be nice and absorbed with the liquid and just easy to blend. Go ahead and grab that. Macadamia nuts are high in vitamin A and E. They help regulate cholesterol. Not for now. Then we have our homemade almond milk. You can use any nut milk that you like or seed milk. We make ours here at Nourish. We have our nutritional yeast. You could use this, high in B vitamins and folate. You can also use brewer's yeast if you can't use nutritional yeast. We have some dried minced onion just for flavor to give it that cheesy flavor. Same with our garlic salt. And then we just have a little bit of lemon juice. Throw that in, put our lid on. We're just gonna let this blend for about three to five minutes until it's smooth. So we wanna always start it on low. Go ahead and turn it on. And then we'll start to turn it up. Go ahead and turn that back down, turn it off from there. Take our lid off and just kind of wipe everything down back into there. So you don't want any chunks if possible. This is a smaller batch, so if it's not blending well, it could be because it's not large. You can always double it. I just made what I knew I needed for our grilled cheese and our soup. Oh, crap. Go ahead and give that a try too. Yep, that's perfect. Tastes like cheese, my favorite thing. So we'll just set this aside. 
and start making our soup. But you can see over here, we let our bread rise. So now it's even with the top of the pan. That's perfect. That's just where we want it. We're going to throw it into our oven. Turn our timer on for 45 minutes. We'll check it then with a toothpick, see if it's ready. If not, we might let it go for five more minutes. But now I'm gonna get cleaned up and we'll start our tomato soup. All right, so now that we have our macadamia nut ricotta made and our bread in the oven, we're gonna start getting the soup ready to finish off. I have a lot of veggies to cut here. First, I'm gonna start mincing my garlic. If you have a fun mincer that you bought somewhere, or maybe you wanna use a food processor, you can. You can also buy it minced. You just wanna make sure that there's no preservatives, it's organic, things like that. Just the highest nutrients you can find. Garlic is great for heart health. All right, just start getting them a little bit smaller and then I'll mince them. So this soup does get blended at the end, so you don't have to worry about them being super small. All right, so that's perfect. And then I'm just gonna put them right back into my jar here. All the pieces on my fingers. Don't use the knife if you're scared to cut yourself. Use your hands. Okay. So from here, then I'm gonna start cutting up my tomatoes and putting them into this clean pan. So you just wanna quarter them. I made this soup a couple weeks ago for a special here at Nourish, and we got to use a local farmer with aromas. It was so delicious. There's nothing like fresh picked tomatoes. So tomatoes are also really great for boosting your immunity, preventing migraines, preventing heart disease. So lots of nutrients in tomatoes, lots of vitamins. And if you don't like raw tomatoes, most people will eat salsa, pizza sauce, spaghetti, anything that you can kind of make with them is also really good for you. So then I'm just gonna switch sides for where this is and I'm gonna cut our mirepoix, which is always gonna be our carrots, our celery, and our onion. I'm gonna start with our onion. Cut it in half. You wanna cut the tip off and then just peel it back, getting that top layer off. And then I always save my ends for my stock, so I'm just gonna push them off my table, cut that little piece off right there. You wanna go ahead and cut halfway through and then we're gonna cut long ways from the tail to the top, and that tail is just gonna hold it on. And we can start to slice our onions. Perfect. Save that end if you'd like, or compost it. So again, cut the top off, peel back that skin. And then cut halfway through again. I'm gonna do those long slices. So then we're gonna go ahead and get started on our carrots. I always use the ends because you're not gonna see it in the soup. So you can do one at a time or two. And I just do really thin slices. It just seems to be the quickest way to cut them. And again, we're gonna blend this soup at the end. So hopefully all these will get nice and pureed. When it starts to get closer to the top, that's usually when I just do one at a time, just to save my fingers. Save the tops if you'd like. I always put mine in my stock at my house. I'm gonna throw those right in there with our onions. Whenever I do a chicken soup at my house, I always keep the carrots in little circles too because the different shapes are always great with kids. They really eat with their eyes first. And we know that carrots have a lot of vitamin A and beta carotene and vitamin C. So it's really cool that our food speaks to us. So when you cut into a carrot, it looks like an eye. So that's how my little girls know that it's good for our eye health and our vision. 
All right, so then we'll go ahead and get to our celery, just cutting the ends off. I did rinse all of these veggies already. Just enough so that you get the ends with any of the dirt residue on it. And then I just thinly slice these as well. And I'll actually use all the way up to the leaves because again, this soup is pureed, you're not gonna see it. And the stalks and leaves in different veggies have different nutrients. So when we juice beets that have leaves, sometimes we'll throw the leaves in if people won't notice. They do turn our juices brown if you use the leaves, but lots and lots of vitamins and minerals in the whole plant. Just a light chop here at the end, this little guy we're gonna throw in too. Okay, so now that we have all of our veggies cut up, we're gonna take them over to the stove. That way we can just toss them in as we need them as we cook. So I'm gonna get us ready over by the stove and bring you along with me. All right, so now we're gonna start assembling our soup and getting it cooked down. We're gonna start off with our mirepoix, just the onions, carrots, and celery. I know we cut up our garlic, but we're not gonna start with that here. Just toss that in. Go ahead and turn your heat on medium high. We want to really start to cook these down. So it's gonna be about five to 10 minutes of just getting those onions translucent. I also have our oil here, our avocado oil. All right. So it won't take too long for us to start to hear it sizzle. And the reason we wanna start here with this is it's gonna really bring those flavors to life and start to like really release a lot of that, the good flavors that we like. It'll take the onions and not make them as harsh when you eat them, it'll make them a little bit sweeter. Um, so that's why we wanna just saute it in the beginning. So you can definitely hear it when it's starting to cook. So that's a good sign. Turn that flame down just a tiny bit. Oh yeah, this is gonna be my dinner tonight. I'm so excited. All right, so it's been a few minutes with the mirepoix cooking. So now I'm gonna add garlic. So garlic cooks a lot quicker, that's why we waited to add it. We do wanna kinda saute it and release some of that flavor, let it get incorporated by the rest of the veggies too. love the smell of these veggies they're so good so you can tell that you're at a good place when you look in the pot and you can see that everything looks a little bit brighter so the onions are more translucent they're like see-through but the celery and the onions get really really bright that's how you know that they're pretty well cooked so from here I'm gonna go ahead and add in my veggie stock and we make our own veggie stock here at nourish So now I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my dry seasonings. I have my parsley, oregano, and basil. And we wanna throw it in with the stock so that it can reabsorb and reconstitute some of that moisture and release those nutrients in the flavor mostly. We also have our sea salt we'll go ahead and add. It does look like a lot of seasonings, but I swear the flavor is amazing with this. And all those herbs are so rich in phytonutrients and micronutrients so we do want to heal ourselves while we're eating it doesn't look like very much liquid but when we add the fresh tomatoes and they start to break down they're going to release a lot of liquid and they'll be submerged by the end of the cooking process our uh, pot is boiling now with all of our yummy veggies and stock in it so this is the perfect time to go ahead and carefully add your tomatoes be careful that you don't splash it up and burn yourself go so as you can see the tomatoes are above the liquid we want to just go ahead and stir those in yeah perfect so we just want to stir them and let that hot liquid it immediately is starting to cook them and they're starting to go down we'll let this come back up to a boil cover it with a simmer leave it for 20 minutes and then we'll come back add our cashew ricotta and blend it So 
our timer went off, it's been 45 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and just check our bread. I'm gonna use one glove here, pull it out, grab one of these nice skewers, put it in, pull it back out, and it's clean, so we know it's ready. So I'm gonna turn off my oven, grab my other mitts, and then pull it out. All right. And then we already have our cooling rack. This doesn't need to sit in the pan at all unless you want it to. We'll just let it come on out. And flip it on over and we'll let that cool. So we let our bread cool on the rack. It is nice and cool. The way you can always tell if bread is ready or any baked good is ready is you just wanna take the top side of your wrist, touch the middle, and if it's warm at all, you know that it's probably not ready to be sliced into. This is nice and cold. So we'll just cut the end off. Just show you guys this beautiful bread. I mean, doesn't that make you so happy? I love bread. So you can slice the pieces as thick as you'd like. I don't like really big pieces of bread. I like them um, pretty standard size. And again, we make all of our bread at Nourish Cafe and Market, so I love that we get to share this recipe with you. So we're gonna grab our spatula, our macadamia nut ricotta, and our bread. Come on over to our flat top. So if you're not as lucky as me to have a 36 inch flat top, a grilling pan or a saute pan will work really well. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of olive oil. And then I like to take my bread, take one side and then the other and just give it a nice little toss. So it's a great way to do this without any butter. We like to keep it plant-based here. So we're gonna let that get nice and hot on the inside, which the side down is gonna be the inside, and then we'll flip it. We're gonna throw the ricotta on, and obviously this cheese doesn't need to melt like traditional cheese, so it just needs to kind of get warmed through, so it's really, really quick with that, but I love toasting both sides of the bread, so you can kind of make your grilled cheese however is nostalgic to you. And I'm just gonna check on my soup really quick. So you can see it's boiling. The tomatoes are starting to break down really nicely, which is exactly what we want. That way when we puree it, we don't get any of those skin pieces left behind. It's all a part of the soup. But you can see too that there is so much liquid now from when we started, so that's really great. So we're just gonna check on our grilled cheese now. Go ahead and flip that over. So that's like the perfect toast we want. Flip this guy over as well. And then I have the leftover ricotta that we didn't use in the soup that I'm just gonna drizzle on both sides of the bread. You can put as much as you like. Just remember that it doesn't really melt, so what you put on will just ooze off the sides if you get it too thick. Mm. Um, sometimes I like to do a little bit of the nut ricotta and some vegan pesto on one side. It's a little treat. So we're just gonna let that start to toast on the other side, warm itself through, and then when that's done, we'll serve it up with our soup and give it a try. We go ahead and check our grilled cheese on this side, and if you just kind of lift it up and look, you see that it's nice and brown. We'll take this guy and just flip it right on top. Oh yeah, there we go. Perfect vegan grilled cheese. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn off our pot. It's been 20 minutes and it's really hot. So we're gonna take our lid, place it to the side. The reason that we turn it off right now is because if you blend it by hand and it's on, it's gonna like boil up and burn you. So I have my hand blender here. If you wanted, you could use a food processor or a high power blender. I'm just gonna demonstrate with our hand blender. So, done blending my soup over here. We're gonna take it off the heat, bring it back over to our table. Nice, so it's really just the kind of puree that you want. If you want it thinner or like not as chunky, you're welcome to throw it into a Vitamix or a food processor. Dump two thirds of a cup in, leave a little bit behind for our grilled cheese and then just mix this in. So, so you just see it getting really creamy and yummy. So just like any other bisque, traditional bisque, where they would add cheese or heavy cream, we just add that macadamia nut ricotta. 
So now that our soup is done, we're gonna go ahead, slice our bread, and make our grilled cheese. So we got our tomato bisque soup. We have our grilled cheese, and we're just gonna get it plated up and try some. I'm gonna go ahead and take my grilled cheese, place it on here, and I'm actually gonna get my soup plated first. So, taking as much as you would like. It's one of my favorite soups of all time. And I like to just place it on the plate like that, and then I love cutting my grilled cheeses on a diagonal. See all of that yummy cheese oozing out. You can plate it really fun for those that are coming over that you're going to entertain. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and dip me some in and take a bite. This is really hot. <laughs> mm hmm. And so good. The bread is so freaking good. I'm definitely a bread snob. I love fresh bread because I make it all the time. But the tomato bisque is so yummy. You wouldn't even know that it's vegan. And it's so easy. Definitely something you should incorporate into your daily diet. You also, just so you guys know, can freeze your bread loaves because this bread is preservative free, so it does go bad quickly. You're welcome to freeze it in the slices that you want to take it out in or the whole loaf. And then the tomato soup also freezes really well for about six months. So great things to meal prep if you have the time. If not, just make it, enjoy it and try it out for yourself. So thank you for joining me today in making my tomato bisque soup with the macadamia nut ricotta. We also made our own fresh bread from scratch, which is really cool. If you like these recipes, please follow me at Chef Kimber Dean or Nourish Cafe and Market, our websites, Facebook pages, or Instagram. And don't forget to nourish from the inside out.